G'day, let's have a look at what's inside this 3D Connection Space Mouse Pro. This is a brand new one, straight out of the box. Still has that little protection on the top. So we'll see exactly what's inside and how this thing works. This is a wired version, so just a standard USB-A plug there that just goes into a USB port. And the mouse is then powered by that and also that's how it communicates back to the computer or whatever device you're using it on. So I have already taken a wireless one apart so this is a little compact version which just has that actual six degree of freedom movement and then it just got the two buttons on the side and then on off at the back so if you want to see that i'll put a link up up in there but otherwise this video is about this one so let's have a look at the difference between the pro and the standard one or the compact one so there's no visible screws but usually they hide them underneath these little pads so i'll pull these rubber pads off see if there's any other screws under the sticker yeah i think there is i can feel something so I'll take the whole thing apart and then let's have a look. There we go, so that's just loosened the two sides so that top covers come off, and then we've just got the top plate and the bottom plate. Actually, I'll take this cable off. So this is just the USB cable that comes in through this little hole in the bottom and then plugs into the actual PCB on there here. But we'll have a look at that in a second. So first we've got that base plate. It's, it's really just a piece of plastic, and then we've got this bit of metal on the top. And the purpose of this plate here is just to act as a weight. So it's just glued down and then also held in by these little standoffs here. And then that just adds a really nice weight to this whole base. So it's not too heavy, but it's got enough base, and it sits on these rubber pads that I took off there because there was a bunch of screws hidden underneath. There was also a few screws under here, under this little sticker. But basically, that plate just acts as a very nice solid base, so the mouse just stays nice and sturdy as you move it. So we can put that aside and then we can have a look at this. Well, I actually keep digging into this. But I didn't really get a good look at this before. So really, you've just got all these buttons on the side that are just a couple of shortcuts for keyboard. If you can set these to whatever you want to do. And you've got a couple of other navigation buttons on the side there and orientation. And then in the middle is where you've got that actual space mouse feature of this. So that's six degree of freedom. You've got roll pitch, your, and then you've got the actual translation about all those three axes. So you can see this has a little bit of movement, but it's got these hard stops as well. So if you push it too far or pull it up too much, it will stop. So it's very difficult to actually damage this mechanism. And now on the other side, I did undo these three screws, which were underneath the sticker. And that just seems to have held in this actual mouse bit here. So you can see that kind of flaps around a little bit. Now this would have been inserted from the bottom because it's got these three feet that go quite a bit wider than the actual hole space for it there. So the way we're going to have to get that off is probably peel this off and there might be a screw or a couple of screws in there that we can take that top little bit of plastic off and then this whole thing will come off from, from that side. The other thing we've got is this other bit of metal all the way around here just to act as a base for all those buttons there. So, so all those, all these buttons here as you press them that would just be providing that nice hard solid base for you to press against. And then we just have this really thin ribbon cable here that comes into the board. So this is just the main board doing all the processing for this. And I assume those buttons there would literally just be actual switches. So just closing that circuit, coming straight back to this, and then this board here would actually be reading them. The other thing we've got is this little sort of spring bit here. And I think that's just gonna be contacting onto a grounding pad. So that's just gonna be grounding these two the PCB and this bottom plate here and I think it also does push against that base plate there as well so all of that would just be acting as a ground. Interesting thing that I just noticed is this piece of metal here seems to just be stamped out of out of sheet metal but it's got all the screw holes numbered so there's two there's nine five seven three eleven one so very interesting I'm not sure why the numbers are all over the place but maybe that's the way they put them in so if they put one two three, four, that would make a lot of sense actually that that's how they insert them. So 
you do usually do one side and then you do the opposite so the diagonal just so you secure it as much as you can and you go the diagonal so you put that pressure point in on the outsides because if you just start going one two three you'll put a lot of pressure on this and then this side here might flex up and just put the whole thing out of alignment and i guess if a person is assembling this that's probably also a nice and easy way to, to actually count them and make sure they haven't missed any of these holes so everything's in there so it looks like there's 11 11 different screws holding that together so i'll just take this ribbon cable out it just slides in there and then i'll try to take this mouse bit off first and then we can have a look at those buttons There we go, so that's come off really nicely and then we've got three screws here, so I'll undo them and I think this whole plastic bit will come off. Cool, that just pops off this plastic cover. And the other mouse is constructed the same way, so this top little plate will pop off and you can do the same thing. So I think the reason they've done that is if any of this gets worn out, because this plastic does have a little bit of a soft coating on it, so if that does get worn out, or just sort of fades or gets yucky over time, you can take this off quite easily and replace it while still having the whole mouse and, and not having to replace any of these really expensive parts. All right, so I think now we should just be able to pull that off. Now we've just got this grounding, little pin holding that down. So I can take that one off and then this will just come out. out. So that there is the actual mechanism that measures that motion off the space now. So let's just have a look at this, I guess, while we've got it open. Really on the back here, we've just got a PCB. It's just got that connector for the buttons and then we've got that USB connector here. Then we've got this rubber sort of gasket around the side, just covering all of that. And what that is covering is the actual mechanism of how this works. So this might be a little bit difficult to show, but I'll bring that up closer. Let's have a look at it. So basically how this work is, works is, is using light. So you can see there's an LED there. So there's actually two LEDs there shining into this little bit of plastic, so plastic bracket. And then down the bottom there, there's just gonna be a receiver. So the way this works is we've got one beam of light shining at this angle. We've got another one shining at this slight different angle through that plastic channel. And it goes exactly down onto the actual receiver. So see if I can just light this up a little bit better and show it closer on the camera. It might be might be a bit difficult to see, but if we can get that to focus. There you go, so you can see that little chip down the bottom that would actually be reading that light coming into it. So it's a full pin, just little black little chip. So it makes me think it might actually even be two receivers. So we've got two lights coming in and then two receivers there. That would make the whole thing a lot more precise and then give you that six degree of freedom movement with it. So I'll try it again without the light. That might look a little bit better there. So that sort of mechanism or that assembly is replicated three times. So we've got another one here and another one here. By moving this PCB around, that those two light emitters move and they change their position and the distance to that actual receiver there. So by doing that on the three different sides and having that multiple of two, that can actually then very precisely determine the position of this PCB with respect to the bottom PCB. And that movement, that's what then gives you, or that gets converted electronically through the board into the comp computer, and that gets taken as that input for the, again, roll pitch, yaw, and then the translation on those axes. The really neat feature here is this PCB up the top. It's just a dumb PCB. It really doesn't have anything else on it apart from those LEDs. So it's just got those six LEDs. But the way that that actually gets power is there's, there's no physical connections except for these springs. So it's got these springs, so three of them, one, two, three on each side. And they that's what actually obviously springs this board back so it always holds it in that position. So it acts as a really nice mechanical connection between the two boards but also it acts as an electrical connection. So one of them is going to be ground, one of them is going to be power, and the other one might not be anything, or there'll be, you know, out of the three, one will have power, one will have ground. Then on top here, we just have this plastic bracket that just mounts, well, actually, it doesn't mount anything onto it, but it, it just holds it there, and it just acts as that hard stop for this top bit, so you can't push it down further, this bracket, so you don't actually end up damaging those springs 
and likewise you also can't pull the PCB up too far because that will stop it, it'll hit that bottom edge and it'll stop it from being pulled too far. So that just prevents damage to those springs and obviously just ripping the whole thing off. There's a couple more screws here so I'll just take them off and have a look at this actual control PCB. But then really other than that, this bit of rubber just fits around the outside. So I think that's just there because it's light, it'll just block everything out and also just protect any sort of dust or anything getting in that because those are quite sensitive components in there and even a little bit of dust can probably throw that off quite a bit. Depending on the calibration I guess, you could probably just recalibrate it, but it's better to protect it. Alright, so this is that bottom PCB that just snaps off and then it looks like we just have another one in there. So I'll just keep keep going and just undo these other few screws here. Uh, actually, all these screws are going to do is they just, that's what holds that little bit of plastic in place up the top. There you go, so that, that bottom bracket just comes loose. So we just got a little controller here and then just a, a few supporting electronics on there. There's also going to be an analog to digital converter because that light that's getting sensed is going to be an analog signal. So then the analog is going to get converted to digital, passed down through these pins, and then it's going to go onto this main board here, which has that much bigger controller there. So that's just an Atmel controller there, or microcontroller. And that's what's actually going to be figuring out the position of this, doing those calculations, and then converting it to USB and passing that USB, or passing that information through that USB protocol to communicate with the computer. That's pretty much it. A couple of other smaller bits and pieces, a little crystal oscillator there. We've got a couple of voltage regulators just to keep a nice steady power coming in. But that's pretty much it. So that all just mounts on here. And then there is this one more screw in the middle. So I'll just quickly do that. But I think that's what actually holds that bracket on the side. So I thought those other three screws would hold this bracket, but yeah, it's, it's just this just this little bit of plastic that holds it on the top just to prevent that motion or, or the user's motion damaging damaging this so open that up a little bit more you can probably get a better look now so we've got those two leds down the bottom and then up the top here that little receiver there so this is this is done really neatly i really i really like how they've done this especially i just just love that they've used these springs as mechanical and as an as an electrical um, component there it just it just serves two purposes so so why not it's it's easier to build it's a cost saving measure and it's a really nice neat package all right so i'll just put that cover back on so we don't get too much dust on it while it just sits here i'll just put that together in a little bit let's have a look at this so let's have a look at these buttons here because there's those 11 screws so i'll start undoing doing them Uh, there we go that metal just comes right off and as i was saying before that metal is just acting as a base to be pushed up against and then what we've got is you can see this really intricate well it's a film but then this intricate layer of tracks that are laid on top so this is actually going to be three layers of film i'm not sure if i can get it off nicely without actually ruining it i don't think i can so i'll try to show it this way but what you'll see is you can see that little cutout so you've got that circle cutout so what it is, is, it's three layers. So you've got the bottom and the top layer, and they've got the actual tracks on them. And then they've got a point that comes very close to touching, but doesn't actually touch because that in-between layer holds a little gap on the side. So those bits of contact there, well, you won't be able to see it, but you can see that cutout, and that cutout is just going to be on that middle layer. But then these bits here, is this is just going to be very soft rubber, and they just act as those little buttons just to put that little bit of pressure on. Sometimes what they do is they put a conductive coating on this and then a track there and then as this button touches that track it actually shorts it and then that's what sort of presses that button. But in this case they haven't, they've done it, some keyboards do this as well actually, so they've, they've done it this way. Whereas this could be anything, it doesn't really matter what this is, it doesn't actually play any, any, of, that, any of that electrical role in the system, it just provides the mechanical push. So really you could operate this just with your finger like that, touch it and then that would push it, push it quite fine. So this is here just to provide that back force against the buttons. So you can see these buttons just all fall. I'm not sure if that comes up on camera actually. Yeah, so you can see they all just fall fully in and just get recessed all the way down. I can push it back up and then again gravity just pulls it down. 
So that's what that's what this layer of rubber does here. It just sits in there. That pressure gets provided by that plate, and then this just pushes up, and, and you can see those buttons hold there now, and they'll spring back, spring back up. So that's how that's done. And then just again, this this layer of re these really cool tracks that they just run all over the place, and then that you can see here, they all just meet right at this point. Go through this little ribbon cable, which is also just that film with the tracks printed on it, and then that connects into this PCB here, and then that would just read the different connections and see that a button has been pressed by having that electrical contact on here. There you go. So that's it. I think basically. As far as the actual six degree of freedom mechanism is concerned, it's it's identical to this compact version, but the PCB and the battery and the other stuff inside here is very different to this. So if you wanna check that out, I'll, I'll put a link up the top again, as I said, and have a look at that. So check that one out. So then apart from that central motion sensing mechanism, we've then just got this different, I guess, button configuration. Um, on, on this one, you just have these two side buttons. So one and two there and they're just done slightly differently to, to how this is done, which makes sense. But it's really nice to see, I like the way this is built. It's nice to just see that commonality. So if you're used to the compact mouse, you upgrade to this Pro, this is gonna feel exactly the same. You'll just pick it straight up. It's, it's, it is exactly the same mechanism, so, so that's good. And then I guess just your hand will sit a little bit differently on there. And then these buttons here, you can get used to pretty quickly. And the, I like the feature that you can set these custom commands, shortcuts or macros or whatever you want up the top here. And it's just nice that you can use your non-dominant hand a bit more when, when doing this sort of CAD work or whatever else you guys use it for. I use it for CAD. Let me know down in the comments actually what you use this for and what other application there might be that I can use it for that I don't. Awesome. So that's, that's it for this one. Thanks very much for watching. Hit that like button, subscribe, help support the channel. I very much appreciate it. Thanks very much. Have a good one.